having different views tells you kind of what's going on with the confirmation. Not only does looking at them from the front and the side and the actual points, but when you flex them and then when you bring them forward on the stand, it gives you just another view to see it, right? It looks pretty straight, okay? But you can see a slight change in the foot, and a lot of times you can see a slight offset on the hoof capsule to the bony column. We've all had that horse with the insides crushing and it's really, really tight and upright or rolled under, and the outside's flared and just carrying out, right? Because there's more hoof capsule to the outside of the bony column than the inside. And that's bone alignment to the bony column, right? Or the hoof capsule alignment, okay? So along with the joint planes, like, we have perfect hinge joints, right? All the way down. In our heads, we all think bones are straight and perfect 90, right? All that kind of stuff. Well, these joint planes can be tipped. And that's when we get paddling or winging really bad, right? And so we ain't going to fix the joint plane. We ain't going to take and jack up the joint and make it perpendicular to the bone. So we need to adapt our shoeing and or our trim to balance the foot to make it carry as best as possible. Okay? Everybody follow me with that? So like I'm not trying to fix anything. And that, like to me, when you go up to a new client and you start shoeing a horse, especially when the horse is good and they like their past shoer, and for whatever reason they're getting a new shoer, I am 100% against bad mouthing anything that that farrier did, regardless of what it's got on its foot. Because if it was doing its job and they liked it, I'm gonna become the bad guy really quick, okay? And I ain't gonna tell them that I'm fixing anything. Because in their mind, it was already fixed, right? So that communication with the client is crucial in how you talk. And we're all considered professionals, right? Yeah. Farriers get a very limited access to education on dealing with clients. Vets get a complete course on how to talk to clients. Okay? That's why they're considered the professional in this industry compared to us. They actually get educated on how to talk. Okay? So if you think about that, whenever I come in here, I'm not trying to fix anything. They don't need to know what I'm doing or how I do it, right? So I'm gonna go in there, stay out of danger, do the best job that I can, fit the foot, trim the foot properly to help protect the foot, right? The whole reason this thing's hard is to protect the pedal bone it's standing on. I can't stress that enough. There's zero reason to ever cut too short because you're coming back, right? If you or at all question, just leave it a little bit longer this time. Come back in six weeks, maybe make it a shorter cycle. Come back in four weeks, okay? We're the ones that determine the cycle length from what we see on the foot, because we're the professionals, right? So if we think that the foot maybe is a little bit longer than we think, the next time I come back, maybe have it a shorter cycle, and then assess it, right? But if there's any chance that I'm gonna maybe cut too much, and he's gonna possibly come up sore tomorrow, that's, that's not in our realm, right? The first utmost basic that I believe in is do no harm. We're all going to do something at some point. I've hit blood many times. I've stuck horses plenty of times. I've soared horses plenty of times. That's the education. That's the practice that we're in, right? But whenever we're pushing the envelope, we come into a very big realm of possibly causing soreness or pain. We don't, don't do that. Like, blood's never okay. Like, I saw a post on Facebook the other the other week. <laughs> I don't know what it was about, but I just saw a couple comments that said, ah, I'll stop when I hit blood if it's that long. I'm 100% against that. 100% against that. Okay? The only people that get to get blood are vets. Okay? I was at a vet clinic a couple weeks ago working on a horse that they thought might have had a keratoma. It was just an old puncture. Bad abscess. Affected the bone, demineralized the coffin bone a good portion. I went in there and debrided all the dead tissue. Did not hit a stitch of blood. The first swipe that the vet took, it was pouring blood. And like I made it a point to the to the client where I'm like, you noticed that he did that, not me. <laughs> I got I got done, I had blood everywhere on me. So when I was nailing up the bar chute to put the hospital plate, I had to pour the blood out of the hoof capsule every nail. It was bleeding that bad. I'm like, ah, that's, I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> like, so, um, it looks like this guy's gonna be pretty quiet. So we might just flip him around so that I can have the feet facing you guys so you guys can see a lot easier. And if he'll, if he'll do it, then we'll do it that way.